Hello students. In this video, we are going to learn about dynamic signals. In dynamic CMOS, we will be learning about a little different circuit style when compared with your static CMOS. What was in static CMOS? We had a pull up network and a pull down network. What we had in static CMOS, we had pull up network and pull down network. Whereas in your dynamic CMOS, we will be having only your pull down network. We don't have pull up network in your dynamic CMOS. And we will be having two extra transistors and the transistors or the MOSFETs will be controlled by clock input. Here, the operation of your dynamic CMOS is divided into two phase, which is pre-charge phase and evolution phase. What are they? Pre-charge phase and evolution phase. So the output will be based on whether the device, whether the device is working in pre-charge phase or in evolution phase. And that particular phase is determined by the clock input. What is it? We have clock inputs. And that clock inputs is going to determine what phase my device is operating. It can be either in pre-charge phase and evolution phase. And the pull down network in dynamic CMOS will be constructed exactly the same as that of your static CMOS. So this is the circuit of your dynamic CMOS. What is it? I told we have only pull down network. We don't have pull up network. So the pull down network will be having certain inputs based on your expression or the circuit that we are going to implement. And we have clock signal that is going to determine whether your device or the circuit is going to work in your what phase, recharge phase or in evolute phase. So the clock inputs are given to the two different type of MOSFETs, which is PMOS and your NMOS, named as MP, that is precharged MOSFET. What is it? Precharged MOSFET. And next is the transistor or the MOSFET that is used during your evolution stage. That is N MOSFET. And top is the P MOSFET. And the inputs to the transistors are nothing but your clock. What are the inputs that you are feeding to your pull down network? That is same as that of your Boolean expression. And the output is given or connected to your capacitor. Right? We already learned in previous video, we will be having a temporary storage of signal. So the output voltage, whatever it may be, that will be stored in your capacitor for some time. That is for particular hold period or hold time, your output voltage will be stored in your capacitor. So this is a circuit of your dynamic CMOS. Now we will see about the working of this dynamic CMOS. What I have drawn, the same circuit, I have redrawn again on the side, only then we can understand what is the working of your dynamic CMOS. Else it will be difficult to move back again and again. So now see, pre-charged phase, right? The first phase is pre-charge phase. We are going to pre-charge your output. That is the meaning of your pre-charge phase. I am giving my clock to be equal to zero. So in your pre-charge phase, my clock is turned to zero. So if I give zero to my PMOS device, what will happen? If I give zero to my PMOS device, what will happen? Giving a zero to my PMOS device will turn on my PMOS and giving a zero to my NMOS will turn off my NMOS. 
right? That is what is written when clock is equal to zero, my MP is on and ME is equal to off because ME is NMOS and MP is PMOS, zero turns on PMOS. So if my MP is on, what will happen? That particular MOSFET is shorted and on the top it has to be VDD. That particular VDD will pass at the output. So what will be your output? Output will be charged to VDD. So the inputs pre during pre-charge usually must be zero. And another condition that we must know is during pre-charge state, all your inputs must be zero. Right? And in pre-charge, my clock is zero. So what is happening? My output is VDD or nothing but my output has been pre-charged to VDD during my pre-charge phase. And next, we have to check for the other condition of clock. What is it? When clock is turned equal to one. If my clock is turned equal to one, we will be moving into the evaluation phase. The particular logic is evaluated because till now we gave input as zero. Now, listen, when my clock is equal to one, what is happening? If I give one to my PMOS, what will happen? The device will turn off or that switch will turn off. If I give one to my NMOS, my device will turn on, right? So where is the connection? Is there a connection from your VDD to output? No, because my MP is turned on, I mean turned off or the particular device is no open circuit. There is no direct connection. There is no direct connection between VDD and your output. Now comes the evaluation. If my inputs to my pull down network is on, what will happen? If inputs are on, my pull down network is on. Already my evolution transistor is on. So both the networks, that is pull down network and the MP are turned on. And there is a path for your output to discharge towards ground as both your PDN and MP is on. Next, if my inputs are made in such a way, my pull down network is turned off. Is there is a connection or a path to flow or to discharge from your output to ground? Though your ME is on, my PDN is off. So that is open and one more is closed. So is there a way for your output to discharge to ground? No. So what will be the value which is stored in your output? The output will store the pre-charged value. What value that has been already pre-charged that will be stored in your capacitor. And this phase is called as your evaluation phase. So what is it? I'll just repeat it again. When your pre-charge phase starts, my clock will be equal to zero and the inputs will be made equal to zero. So inputs are zero, clock is zero, my MP is on and my output has been pre-charged to VDD. And then when my clock is turned equal to one, my MP is off and my PDN is on only if my inputs are on and my ME is already on because my clock is equal to one. There is a path for your output to discharge to ground only when your PDN is on. If not, my output will store the pre-charged value and that will be stored in the capacitor, right? The logic function that we have implemented we use just only NMOS devices. That is the logic is there only in your pull down network. The other two transistors are clocked MOSFETs. So how many number of transistors we require in dynamic CMOS? We just require, if the number of inputs is N, we need N number of transistors or N number of MOSFETs plus two additional MOSFETs for your two clock, clock signals. So the number of MOSFETs we require over here is n plus two. But here, there will be high dynamic power consumption. And this advantage is, it is providing increased speed and the area is very less because the number of transistors has been reduced. So the area consumption is very less. It is highly compact because only n number of transistors plus two extra transistors has been used as the logic is implemented only using NMOS devices. So in the next video, we will learn 
about pseudo and MOS device. Thank you.